All right, let's dive into something uh, really fascinating today. We're exploring a piece of tech that honestly sounds like pure science fiction, but is very real. It's called the Lundberg lens. Mm -hmm. And it plays this uh, huge role in modern defense. Imagine a device that can control how things are seen specifically on radar. Yeah, manipulate perception. Exactly. It's not just about making things show up more on radar. Sometimes it's about making them look like something else entirely. Something completely different. Right. So our sources for this deep dive, they give us a pretty clear mission. Yeah. Figure out the surprising ways this, well, this passive little sphere changes everything. From quiet recon flights to, you know, outright deception in the air. So as we talk, really think about this. Yeah. What does it mean when what you see on that radar screen, hmm. well, isn't what's actually there? It's pretty remarkable, isn't it, how something that sounds so simple, a passive spherical device, can do such complex things. At its heart, it's basically a perfectly tuned radar reflector. Okay. So unlike, say, a flat bit of metal that might scatter radar waves everywhere. Right. Bounces them off randomly. Yeah. The Lunenberg lens, because of its unique internal structure, this gradient, it basically pulls radar signals in and focuses them right back where they came from. Like a lens focusing light. Exactly like that. So whatever has one of these attached becomes incredibly bright on radar, like uh, shining a spotlight back at the radar operator. Oh, uh, I see. So its main job really is to crank up an object's radar cross-section, the RCS, basically how big or visible it looks on radar. Okay, so making things easier to see, that makes sense. But you mentioned deception, and our sources definitely lean into that more uh, intriguing side, especially in peacetime. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's where it gets really clever. We move from just boosting visibility to actually simulating something else. Our sources talk about this fascinating peacetime use, particularly when flying, you know, near or over other countries' airspace. Okay. They mention these things called sheath aircraft. Now, these are often advanced jets, maybe for reconnaissance, things that naturally have a low radar signature. Stealthy, maybe. Or just small. Yeah, but they'll actually carry these Lunenberg louses, not to hide, but the opposite. It intensifies the radar return, um, not just making them visible, but completely hiding their true radar signature which might be much smaller or just very unique. Hold on. So they want to be seen, yeah. but not as themselves. They use the lens to fake their signature. Precisely. Yeah. Making themselves look bigger. Or maybe just more ordinary, less alarming. What's the point there? Exactly that. It's pure misdirection. Sophisticated stuff. Mm -hmm. By using the lens, a small, maybe very advanced jet could pop up on enemy radar looking like a much larger plane. Mm -hmm. Maybe even, you know, a standard cargo plane or an older fighter type. Mm -hmm. And that changes the whole calculation for the other side, right? They might scramble expensive jets for a multi-million dollar intercept. Against what they think is a major aircraft. But it's actually just one smaller, maybe less immediately threatening plane gathering data. It's a way to make them burn resources or just confuse their intelligence picture. Yeah without ever firing a shot. That's a really smart intelligence tactic. Uh -huh. But what about um, more active uses, like tactical deception on the battlefield? Our sources mention drones, UAVs. Yes, and that's where the tactical possibilities really uh, explode. Think about the example from India. They use a drone, right, equipped with a Lunenberg lens, and its job is to fly near enemy positions to pinpoint their weapons, figure out what kind of anti-aircraft systems they're using against ground troops. Okay, but why the lens? Because the lens makes the drone's radar signature massive. It makes it look like a full-sized helicopter. Ah. Uh. And a helicopter might be expected in that area. Exactly. A helicopter showing up might fit certain mission profiles, so it doesn't immediately scream unusual threat the way a small, unknown drone signature might. It allows the drone to operate more openly, in a sense. Wow. Okay, so if one drone can look like a helicopter, I'm guessing you could scale that up. Imagine sending a whole bunch of them. You got it. That's the next level. Our sources point this out clearly. If you send out a swarm of drones and they all have these lenses, well, you could completely swamp an enemy's radar. All right. They'd suddenly see what looks like multiple attack helicopters heading their way. That forces a reaction, doesn't it? Absolutely. They'd have to fire up their air defenses, maybe launch fighters. All to counter a threat that isn't really what it seems. We even see reports of Russian decoy UAVs using these lenses for exactly this purpose, creating ghost targets. It draws enemy fire, reveals their positions, or just masks what your real forces are doing. It's all a game of smoke and mirrors played out on radar screens. 
So when you pull back and look at all this, what's really striking is how this the simple seeming passive thing, the Lundberg lens, just completely changes how we understand what's happening up there. It has this powerful dual role, you know. On one hand, yeah, it boosts visibility, helps with tracking when you need it. But maybe more interestingly, it simulates bigger targets or totally different aircraft types for a huge strategic edge. From those sheath aircraft hiding their real signature. Right, misleading everyone to that Indian drone pretending to be a helicopter to find enemy guns. Or that swarm making you think attack choppers are inbound. Yeah, forcing a costly reaction. Yeah. It fundamentally yeah. alters the aerial perception game. So it leaves you with this thought, doesn't it? If a simple sphere can fool really sophisticated radar systems into seeing things that aren't truly there, huh. what does that tell us about the future, about information warfare, and what seeing even means on this digital battlefield?